some of the most important ways of hearing God's voice are the Word of God, through the Holy Spirit leading in your heart, and through the circumstances of your life. So, in this message, we will see the four signs that God will show you that you need to see for you to block someone from your life. Number one, God could be saying to block them if your hope for a relationship with this person is intruding on your hope in God. It's not wrong to hope that you meet a godly person to date. It's not wrong to have a hope for a Christian marriage one day. And it's not even wrong to have a hope that you and this person will one day be together. But it is wrong for any desire to crowd out your ultimate hope in God. In other words, God has no issues with us desiring other things beside Him. It was God who made us to have other longings. We all get hungry, we all get thirsty, we all get tired. And God made us with this need to eat food, drink water and get sleep. Problems only arise when we start wanting things more than we want God Himself. And that's what the Bible calls an idol. 1 Peter chapter 9 verses 13 to 16 states, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. Hope is an eager expectation for something good in the future and this is why our ultimate hope must always rest fully on Jesus Christ. We have been immensely blessed through Christ now but so much more redemption is ahead when Christ returns and makes all things new. That is where our ultimate hope must lie. This means that we must live in the dual realization that we should seek joy now while also realizing that we will never be fully free to enjoy God as He intended until Christ returns or until we go home to Him in glory when we die. Your future will not be perfect even if God gave you that person. It's okay to hope for a joyful relationship, but ultimately our hope must be fully in God because only He can provide that perfect joy our hearts crave. Number two, if you have to force it to make it happen, then it probably means God is saying no. I believe in the principle that most things that are truly valuable will not be easy to obtain and maintain. Marriage, for example, it requires a lot of hard work and effort. So it would be unbiblical to say that if you ever have any issues in dating, that this is a sign God is telling you to break up. One difference between overcoming a trial in life through faith compared to forcing your own will is that you are being led by God to overcome a trial in life. The hard work you're putting in will help your relationship with God rather than hurt it. Now, when we are forcing something to happen, our efforts will pull us away from God. And the harder we try to make this certain thing happen that we really want to happen, as Psalm 32 verse 8 to 11 states, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. For many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. So be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy. All you upright in heart. First, this passage teaches us that God is always leading and guiding us. But we have to willingly follow him and not resist his will like an animal who won't listen unless they are forced to obey by oppressive means. God does not want to pin us down and force us to do something. He wants us to follow him willingly and joyfully. And so one way you can know if you're forcing your own will is when sorrows are increasing in your heart because you are truly following God and you will feel surrounded by his steadfast love. If your hard work to keep this person you want is pulling you away from God rather than enhancing your relationship with the Lord, 
then this is a sign that you're forcing it and you must block this person number three if you're stretching the word of God to make it say what you want it to say God is saying no especially if the person makes you compromise on God's word a lot of the time or not even at all as Christians we need to know that God has spoken through his word and therefore we must obey what the Bible says because our conscience will convict us if we were to disobey a blatant command in the Bible just so we could get what we want in life. Sometimes Christians are exempted. Sometimes Christians are tempted to twist and manipulate the word of God to try and make it say something that it obviously does not say. For example, if someone really wants to have premarital sex, they may be tempted to try to just twist and distort what the Bible says so they can put their own conscience at ease that it is really okay to have sex outside of marriage. Or if they do not want to, they may try to twist what the word of God says regarding sins that are clearly condemned in the Bible. As Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 to 4 states, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. People don't want to just deny the word of God. Rather, they want to feel like they are obeying the word of God. So they find false teachers to tell them what they want to hear. So if you need to bend and twist the word of God to make it say something that it doesn't really say, to get the yes you really want from God, this is a sign that God is actually saying no. And number four, if clinging to this relationship is not producing good fruit, this is a sign that God is telling you it's time to let them go. God has put us in a cause and effect world. Every action has a reaction. Everything we do either has a good influence on our lives or a bad influence on our lives. So one of the ways you can know if what you're doing is good is if the effect it's having on you is good. In other words, if the effect is good, the cause is good. And if the effect is bad, then the cause is bad. So this is essentially what Jesus said when he was using the analogy of the good and bad trees in Matthew chapter 7 verses 17 to 20. Jesus said, So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. What is the fruit of clinging to this person in your heart? Is it helping you live free? Is it helping you pursue God's will for your life? Or is it keeping you depressed and stuck, unable to move into the good God has planned for you? You shall know them by their fruit. If letting this person go would rather cause better fruit in your life that will bring God more glory, this is the sign God is telling you to let them go. So I need you to understand this, that the process of letting go will be painful, especially if you have history with this person. It doesn't matter how far you've come, it's how far you're willing to go. If God has given you a vision for your life and this person does not match that vision, then feel free, feel free to cut this person off. Especially if this person is detrimental to your relationship with God. And please, by all means, cut this person off. We as Christians need to learn how to travel light. We need to learn how to travel without excess luggage. It's a painful thing to do. It's a hard step to take. But as the Lord reveals, I pray that you have the heart to do what needs to be done. God bless you.